Welcome, we're live from Xi'an, China for the World Cyber Games 2019. No, oh, nice they're all on the cliff! Onto the cliff. In the meanwhile, we've got Trace hiding in the back. He's going to be able to pick up the double kill. Lit in trouble. He comes to storm on low. Call with you defensively. Trying oh. to make it. Oh. oh, no, they're not going to be able to do it. Look at that. He's going to end the game on the corner. He's C on the corner. That's going to be game. Welcome to War Cyber Games 2019, live from Xi'an, China. My name is G Club. With me is Paper Thin. We have Clash Royale Grand Finals happening right now. We're down to the last two players to take that trophy, become the champion, and take that 50 grand home for them. We have FMGG from Turkey and Juicy J from the United States of America going at it here in a best of five Clash Royale action. It's going to be very, very good. Both players have looked very, very strong throughout these group stages mm -hmm. and into the knockout stage. I can't wait for this. Our two best players out of the group stage are going to face off here, and this is going to be really exciting Clash Royale action. It is going to be the two last players, even the semifinals. Oh, man. How many V games did we just have in the semifinals? That's insane. That's why we had the knockout stage best of five. But until one player gets that number three, we're going to have continuous Un unending regames, <laughs> possibly, and uh, one more game, best of five, might not be exactly what the players uh, have, can show on stage or all their skills on stage, but they gotta do it. It might be a 3-0, it might be a 3-2, it might be like four regames, who knows, but what's gonna happen on the main stage? We have the two players getting ready. It's going to be packed action for Clash Royale, and they're gonna show their skills on stage. Yeah, absolutely. This is going to be a really exciting matchup. Now, in the group stage, when they faced off, it was FMGG who came out ahead, and he was the number one overall player out of the group stage. So, he's definitely your favorite here, but Juicy J has looked quite good. He put up a very strong showing in the semifinals in some grueling, intense, close games. So, he's been really practiced. He's really sharp. I'm really excited to see what he's going to bring here against our number one player. Yeah, we did see a lot of lava with the cage and it's happening. A lot less of balloon and a lot less of clone. We see a lot more cage just in case there's lots of RGs happening. Cage is a great tool just getting that loud. Instead of Lumberjack, even the Brawler comes out after the cage. And then Brawler actually does a whole lot of damage, attacks super fast, even helps out taking down the RG, so it's a really great tool, even without the Lumberjack. But before that, let's take a look at what happened from the group stage. This is the standings. Right, so FMGG came out there six and one. Franco was four and three, and Tauki was three and four. Now, Franco and Tauki did just square off in the third place match, and it was a very close one, but Tauki ended up coming out ahead just narrowly in the fifth game oh, against yes. Franco. Yes, that was a crazy third place match as well. Of course, Juicy J versus that was before in the group stage. What happened in, in that knockout stage? This, is, this all happened to, today. If you missed that match number one and two or the third place match, go back and rewatch it. It's one of the best Clash Royale action. Just 1v1 here. And we're down to the final two, FMGG, Juicy J. And I think it really comes down to their deck choices. They both saw what they played in the semifinals and the day before. Do you think they, there will be any kind of changes or will they bring the exact same decks that they played before? I think we're going to see quite a bit of Royal Giant, Ice Wizard, Tornadoes. The variants of those have been quite popular in the semifinals, in the knockout stages. We've seen all four of the players at least once bring it out. So that is a deck I expect to see. I expect to see someone try some uh, the Lava Hound at some point. That's It's just been too popular. It's just been too good. Yes. And so then we might see some other stuff. There's been some golems with various things behind them, whether that be the cannon carts or the E-Dragon the, the e with the Lumberjack exactly. and that kind of thing. So it all depends on what these players, you know, feel like their opponent's going to bring. Yeah, at least like try once of a golem and then a few Lavas. And if you don't feel it, go back to the RG. And there were some cycles with some Royal Hogs and Motor within the group stage, so they can just 
cycle out to the one of the uh, faster ones if they actually choose to. Here's FMGG, of course, from Turkey, second place from Europe. Uh, made it with that 6-1, uh, 5 and 2 from European, and from the group stage, 6 and 1, 18 points. No one could actually beat him except for just one player. Yeah, he played out of his mind during the group stage. I mean, and and this is the guy, he's going to pull out the mortar, FMGG. If anybody's going to do it, it's going to be him. He's a very strong mortar player. And then this guy here, Juicy J, he has been playing really, really well, even though it was a really tough matchup he had in the semifinals yeah, against, against Franco. Franco. My goodness, that was, what, there were three regames in that one? It was it, crazy. Yeah, they had that regame, then they had regame again, and back in the group stage. So those oh, right. two got to play so many games against each other. It was close, like neck and neck, down to like be below 100 HP at the very end. Sometimes they actually had the regame just having 60 something, 68 HP, I believe, on the left on the tower. Time was not enough, and it's going to be packed action between the two players. I believe the game is ready. Let's go into game number one between the two players. All right, let's see what they want to bring here. Now, Juicy J made his bread and butter here by playing Sparky and Goblin Giant to get to this tournament. But that hasn't proven to be as strong here because of the prevalence of Lava Hound decks. It's a lot harder to run the Sparky deck if your opponent is running Lava Hound. The Tombstone here from Juicy J kind of makes you think it might be Lava Hound, but not always. Yeah, not always. There's some graveyards. We saw a lot, a few more Giant Skeleton graveyards coming out during the semifinals. And it can always happen with the Poison. I think there's a lot higher chance now from FNBG. Yeah, and the Ice Wizard from Juicy J makes you definitely feel like more like it's going to be that Royal Giant variant we've been seeing with the Tornado as well behind it. But maybe not here, the E-Dragon. E we did see a version of the Royal Giant with the E-Dragon, though, the other day. Yes, and it signals somewhat more of the Golem at the same time. We'll have to see until the very end. We have the Golem, really, really heavy one. The point is, before that double elixir time, you, have, you, don't, you can't really take too much damage on your tower. But for now, both players are playing a little bit soft, a little bit slow because they're waiting for that big action at the double elixir time. Right, you don't want to reveal your trunk card until you absolutely have to, and it there is it going is. to be the Royal Giant here. He's got the pretty healthy E-Dragon here to buy it some time, but there's the Goblin Cage. And it's going to continue RG, hitting a few shots, not the Brawlers out with the Rascals. Great Tornado getting everything together. It's even the E-Dragon getting that Chain Lightning into the tower. Oh, this is huge. That's five big shots from the Royal Giant. Make it six to bring that tower down to 491. One attack that did 2,000 thousand damage into the bottom right that was crucial tornado getting everything together near that tower making sure all the dragons are doing the work rg was safe i mean if that happens once again fmgg is in trouble that's going to be towered down if it happens and i love the choice of bringing fireball here as your spell we've seen a lot of barbarians and other units that the fireball is very effective against and here is a cannon cart now this definitely makes us feel like fmgg is going to be doing graveyard here yes. so kind of tricked it going to the other side but it's on the left side with that ice golem few skeletons are connecting but not really doing too much damage only 200. once again that ice wizard proved to be a very effective unit against the graveyard we've seen that a lot here in this tournament so far oh rg's on its way just one more shot it was going to be tower down but not close enough comes a counter graveyard now coming down, coming up from fmgg oh no the goblin brawler is locked onto the ice wizard it takes him down so a bit of damage being done by these skeletons the barbarian barrel comes in a little bit late cleans it up but quite a bit of damage done oh yes this time the princess tower was locked onto another unit here comes the rg once again Again, cannon card to respond. The cage has to come down to defend it. And Just in time. Mm -hmm. But it will be too little, too late. That tower is going down. There's only five seconds left. The cannon card gets distracted. And this will be game number one going to Juicy J. What a game, that game-changing tornado, just having everything in the shot. Even Juicy J's mom came all the way down to Xi'an, China, just supporting him here. And he's going to take that first game. Tornado is one hard spell, but if you're really good at it, you can literally turn the game around, making sure the unit goes into opposite lane, and then just... If you get that elixir trade, then you're having a better attack every single time. Right, we saw two big tornadoes there from Juicy J. Like you mentioned, the one where he dragged the cannon cart into the other lane. The other one where he pulled the melee units away from the Royal Giant with that first big push he had, where he did about 2,000 damage to the Princess Tower, moving all those units away from the Royal Giant, allowing it to just do its thing and put in tons of damage. That RG deck is nasty. I mean, it's got slow, it's got lots of slows, and it's got the RG to do direct damage. Goblin Cage was certainly not enough. Maybe FMGG's got to bring something else, some more heavy, even an Inferno, Inferno Tower or a Dragon. It seems like it needs, it's 
required, basically, to go against RG. Yeah, absolutely. The Infernos are very, very strong against the RG. We are going to jump into game number two. We'll see what kind of changes FMGG wants to make. We are not stopping. We are not delaying anything. We're just going straight in. It's game number two, guys. Already, FMGG's got to have a big comeback here. Best of five between the two players. All right, so there is a Musketeer here from FMGG. And once again, the Fireball being brought by Juicy J. That weakens that Musketeer to the point where anything that touches it will damage it. And here's that Mortar we were talking about earlier from FMGG. Yeah, here we go. We do have it. And RG's going to take a longer time to take care of it. The what follows after those bats were deleted instantly by that Ice Wizard. All right, a Valkyrie comes down here, a pretty decent counter to the Royal Giant and the Ice Wizard because you can catch everything that's bunched up behind the Royal Giant. Still gets a few shots in, is, and the Valkyrie is cleaned up by the Mega Minion. Yeah, we'll have the Hog coming out. This is what we used against even in group stages, and that's what FMGG was really known for. With that Valkyrie, he's going to go straight into that Tombstone, but what follows after, it's a great fireball hitting both Hog Rider and the Musketeer in the back. A sick fireball there from Juicy J. Juicy J just playing the exact same deck, just saying, you have to beat me at my own game, at my best deck, the one that he has been playing throughout this tournament and having a ton of success. And fireball is the key here. I think you really pointed that out. And if you're really good at it, if, you're, if you can hit that Hog and the Musketeer like that at the edge of that fireball, you're so good at your game. Right. You get so much value out of that fireball if you can hit more than one unit with it and it's just so powerful against units like the Musketeer mm. that just leave with a screw a sliver of health after you hit. Yeah that motor did not really do its part too much. RG still getting a direct shot. Second one comes in. Even the Mega Minion is going to uh, no, does not do damage to the Musketeer. But that was still a, a worthwhile doing some damage because the motor didn't get any hit, uh, didn't get direct hit to the tower. And it's a smart change up here by FMGG because he lost some health on that left hand princess tower. Moving over to the right side, you're able to kind of balance the damage between the two. Try to find a way with this mortar to crack the defenses of Juicy J and try to get that RG to be worthless. And then after the fireball, surprise attack on to the left with the Valkyrie Hawk just going straight marching in. This is going to be a whole lot of damage on the left. Yeah, the Snowball is coming in as well to knock the units away to give that Hog an extra hit there. So 12.44, but immediately countering with the Royal Giant Mortar down for defense to try to distract. Yeah, has the Mortar, even the Tornado to get those out of the way. E-Wizard trying to chain and do a lot of damage. RG is still okay, but gets removed by that Valkyrie. Swing at the end, here comes the Hog once again. Yeah, some great changes up here. And there is that Earthquake to eliminate that Tombstone. The Hog's going to come in and get one more swipe. Just barely, I believe, there. The Barb Barrel tried to get there in time, but it was just a little late. Yeah, just a little too late. But down to 797. And it's going to be FMGG really trying to hit that left side for sure. Juicy J's got that Tombstone, but Earthquake will be a big problem from now on. And the big change here so far from FMGG is using the Mortar purely as defense to set up the Hog for offense. And look at this. Oh. It's even getting through and getting one more swing with all those slows and stuns. I know, slows and stuns, and Tornado was not enough to stop that Hog. And two more hits will be GG. So Juicy J going strong with that Fireball this time, getting the Mortar out. But Bats in the air take no damage from that RG. It's just too much there with all those bats alive. They do so much damage so fast. Once again, the Earthquake comes down, but a nice tornado here to pull the hog to the other side. Lovely tornado at the end. Juicy J is getting close, but still did take some damage from the Earthquake. You can't stop that Earthquake damage. And he can, he has two more minutes for FMG just to chip that down. Juicy J needs to go for an attack right now. Right, here comes the Fireball. He's trying to find a way in the Mortar. Desperately placed, but the bats once again doing the dirty work here, taking that RG down before anything can else come can come in. Yes, yeah, exactly one more damage onto that tower with that snowball doing 56. And that's a game coming back strong for FFGG with his favorite deck here. We're tied up 1-1 in the best of five. So we've seen both of these players now win with their favorite decks that they've been kind of utilizing throughout this tournament. FMGG, a strong mortar player, shows it off here how good he is. The changes he made halfway through to utilize that mortar purely for defense really made it a lot more difficult for Juicy J to get his Royal Giant through. Yes, it was like FMGG asking, okay, I'm going to go attack, but Juicy J said, no way, I got my RG right in front of your mortar. And then FMGG, okay, trying that twice. If I just switch it into defense mode, I got my Valkyrie Hog and the EQ to go against you. Had the perfect cycle set up first, 
and then go on an offensive mode. That was a pretty good transition into the game, and Juicy J could not stop it. Yeah, it was hard for Juicy J to get that Ice Wizard in a place where it could deal with the bats, because that's basically the only spell he has available in that situation that's worthwhile using on the bats. You don't want to use the Fireball on the bats. It's a little too expensive to be doing that, so ideally you're having that Ice Wizard deal with those, but because of the placements of the units from FMGG, he's able to wait, place those bats somewhere where the Ice Wizard can't get to him. Even after that, he had to use a tornado to this. A lot of elixirs for that Hog Rider to remove that. And the next game between the two players, between Juicy J and FMGG, is ready, guys. Let's jump into game number three directly. We are flying through this finals. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so some different things coming from both players this game. FMGG probably not going to be sticking with the Mortar here with the Bandit coming through, and the Goblin Cage is here for Juicy J on yeah. defense. That Bandit Miner might just be FMGG trying that Mega Knight one. Once again on this big stage, he has been using it many, many times through the group stage, and in even in that semifinals, Juicy J bringing that favorite. The Lava is here, and then Inferno is going to take care of that Lava, though. Yeah, we'll see exactly exactly how Juicy J wants to counter this Inferno Dragon. He's got a baby dragon behind it, but that's not really a ton of damage, and the Inferno has quite a bit of health, actually, deceptively so. Great Mega Minion placement immediately on top of that Miner. Yep. Mega Minion came down before the Mega Miner. He was expecting that 100%. Both players just knowing the decks of each other because they have played that before. Guard's perfect tool to go against the, the, the Bandit, making sure it doesn't get a dash. But Baby Dragon did get a few hit at the bottom line. Yeah, those are some big hits there, definitely. And now he's forced to use the Miner on defense. Not an ideal situation with how you want to utilize the Miner. Just didn't have anything else in cycle that he felt comfortable using against those guards. Yeah, we had this matchup uh, before, depending on how just FMGG uses that cage and the guards, and even the defensive miner. FMGG might have a chance to dash in or jump in with the uh, potential Mega Knight. I'm, it's, I, it's very likely that he's going to have a similar deck here. Yeah, it, you can use Mega Knight, you can use P.E.K.K.A. It kind of mm -hmm. depends on what you think your opponent is going to run, but like you said, FMGG has been using Mega Knight, and there it is. And he's going to switch sides because he doesn't want to get bothered by anything else, because the big push has to happen onto the right. And this moving the cards from going to the right to the left. Yeah, Brawler bought that enough time for the Inferno Dragon to finish off that Mega Knight. Now we've got the Lava on push on the right side. Poison coming down here. That's a defensive poison from FMGG. There's a Miner in here as well. The Ewiz might get cleaned up here, but he has to turn around and fight that Inferno Dragon. Yeah, perfect placement for Ewiz, but still a whole lot of damage. Few more damage from the Baby Dragon and also but the Miner down to 610 now. And Juicy J, 20, 30 left on that top right. What's what can FFGG do to turn this one around? Mega Knight, okay, he's thinking, okay, I can't really go on the left. It's going to be harder for me to defend when it comes around back to me. It's going to backfire at me, so i got to focus on the right. Yeah, it's going to be really challenging because Juicy J can put a lot of beef in front of his Inferno Dragon, so the, maybe even the as Mega Knight can get taken down yes, like this. even as he uses Zap onto Inferno, but still the Mega Knight does not get to it. Only the Miner and the Miner to counter on the bottom. Bandit's trying to take it up, but down to 354 already. Juicy J is working on that final damage with that Poison cycle. I think he wants to finish it very soon. Yeah, absolutely. That bandit placement against that miner was kind of a big deal. It wasn't the right spot, so that miner got quite a bit of damage and it's only one more poison on the bottom right. This push has to work here for FMGG. Okay, FMGG needs a perfect zap on that Inferno, making sure that jump does work into the tower. It does not, and that's the miner of the final poison on that bottom. Juicy J is going to take game number three. Juicy J doing a great job showing the power of that Lava Hound deck. It's been so effective in this tournament, and he once again makes it work. It's so hard when you have a heavy ground-focused deck like a Mega Knight or a Sparky Goblin Giant. It's really hard to deal with that Lava Hound because so many units get stuck in the air and you don't have the best of answers all the time. Yeah, exactly. And if you mistime it from the Lava's a player point of view, if you mistime your cage or your guards, those Bandit and the Mega Knight will just jump and dash towards your tower, so you gotta really wait for the timing. And you have that Inferno Dragon in the air to take care of that beefy, beefy Mega Knight. So Juicy J really well timed, read the cycle of the opponent, and made him like a fool in this game. And what's even crazier is not only do you have that Inferno Dragon to counter the Mega Knight, but you've got a bunch of stuff you could put in front of the Inferno Dragon so something like the E-Wiz can't even get to it. You're forced to zap that Inferno Dragon, but that doesn't really do much. The beam's gonna reset. You can use a Goblin Cage or some other unit to distract that Mega Knight even longer, and then the Mega Knight's not gonna get his jump damage onto the tower. I mean, what a game. They're going through their favorite decks they have been playing for the last two days, and including today, three days here, and it seems like we're, we are just swapping through between the two players. Let's see if Juicy J can 
finish this thing and become the champion of WCG 2019, potentially the final game of the finals. Yeah, exactly. Could be match point. A Miner comes out right away on the top right-hand corner here on the Princess Tower. Good Mega Minion coming in to limit the damage there, of course. At the beginning of a match, you're not sure if your opponent has Tornado, so you want to put that Miner out on the outer corner of the Princess Tower so the Tornado can't drag it into the King Tower and activate it. But now we're going back to the Goblin Hut. This is another deck that we've seen quite a bit of in this tournament. Most likely, there's going to be a Royal Giant with it. There are some other variants, uh -huh. but in this tournament, it's been exclusively Royal Giant. Yes, and especially from Juicy J, too. And as long as you have a good, really good setup with that hut and even with that furnace later on, you have a good backup. Spawners just gonna keep on attacking, keep on attacking, and that furnace all the way onto the left to get some damage, splash damage into the minion, but it does not go in at all. There's that Barbarian to defend. Yeah, the Barbarians come down, but the Zap and a Miner in here. There's a lot of damage being done to that top left Princess Tower. You can see Juicy J kind of grimacing a little bit. He doesn't have any answers Even for this. Even the Dark Prince and the Mega Minion does connect, and that's a tower down. Not even in one minute mark. Man. FMGG comes back really, really strong right now, and Juicy J's in trouble. Even less space to put those Goblin Hot or Furnace. It's got to be all the way in the back now. Yeah, it's so difficult now for Juicy J and FMGG going into the well of decks that have proved successful for him in this tournament. He beat GDH after losing to him in the first game during the group stage with this giant double Prince deck. Going back to it and already early into this game making it work. Oh, has that Furnace, but the notice that Dark Prince is going on to the left side. Is that a diversion or is he going for that King Tower? Nope, it is just in a spot where it can distract that Dark Prince. Good fireball here from FMGG, cleaning up most of those Barbarians. That Barbarian on the left, low enough that it will definitely not get to the Princess Tower. Oh yes, having some goblins, Spear Goblins are coming down, doing some damage, chipping some damage to the units and the tower now, but still, the Giant will be blocking all those damage, so Juicy Ju Ju Jay's gonna find the hole right now. There's that RG now. Yeah, just a Dark Prince here so far. There's a lot of units built up, the Prince on the left as well, so that RG gets dealt with pretty effectively here, a lightning to clean up some of FMGG's units and a good fireball though from FMGG to counter punch. That fireball takes care of a lot of units into the bridge there. Lightning did come down, but FMGG had that small zap. But still that second shot of RG did go in, but only 20 seconds left in this game. Can Juicy J make something happen? He's a miracle. Yeah, it's gonna need something crazy to happen here. He needed that Royal Giant to get through. It is probably not with that Prince in the way as well. The Prince does a good job of limiting the damage from the RG. Only one shot will happen, and this looks like it's gonna be FMGG's game. We are going to game number five, tied up 2-2. The best series, exactly what we wanted on that main stage, paper thin. And we are going to game number five. This comes down to the final decision. Like, I mean, what do you bring on your final game now? I don't know. This is so hard. I think if I'm Juicy J, I go back into my Ice Wizard Royal Giant situation uh. that seemed to be maybe the deck he's most comfortable with. But then again, he did lose to it against the Mortar. And if you think FMGG is going to go into his comfort zone, you don't want to play against that Mortar with that Royal Giant deck that proved ineffective. Is it Juicy J time again? Like what he did in, against Franco waited until waited so long until the final like minute, even before, even less than a minute, and then just put down that Golem with the Cannon card and push through and win the game? Well, that's a good question. I think that's a really good question, but Juicy J has shown that and knowing that FMGG, does he go for that Infernal Dragon and having that Mortar once again with the Mega Knight? I oh, think this is hard. This is hard to choose. I know. I think the two most likely decks to come out from Juicy J are either going to be Cannon Card Golem or Sparky Goblin Giant. Oh, Goblin Giant Sparky. Yes, we almost forgot about that too. It's also available for both of them. They did play it in the group stage and even before the qualifiers, before they came to Sean. I mean, it comes down to this final game to take that 50 grand home for yourself, US dollars. In second place, gets 20. So that's 30 more. 30k more. USD for yourself getting that first place and we are jumping straight into that final, potentially final game uh, between FMGG and GCJ. Let's see who the champion is. Yeah, there's not a tie if we don't need to have a rematch. This will be match point. 
counter bar barrels coming through an ice spirit here from FMGG. What exactly does that indicate? There's quite a bit that can come from the ice spirit, whether it be a faster cycle, or it could also be that RG Ice Wiz deck that FMGG as well likes to play. Exactly what I was thinking at the same time. You beat me to it too. <laughs> but FMGG did not really play that too many times, but it's in there. It's, in, it's certainly in there with that quicker cycle with that ice. Might just switch it up with that graveyard too, so it's a good question. Juicy J's got a cannon card coming down. Is that the only one? Or are we see are we going to see that big rocky unit coming down too? Yeah, absolutely. This could definitely be the golem deck here from Juicy J. It's been his go-to in clutch situations, and it has worked very, very well for him. Let's see if FMGG can counter it. It might not even be golem, but most likely it is. Occasionally you'll see a royal giant with the cannon cart. But that's not as common, especially with an E-Dragon. Oh, is he just going back with that E-Dragon? It could just still be some, some Graveyard coming down from both player. That would be really cool. Graveyard Poison, that's another cool option here. Tim Gigi just waiting, not revealing his wind condition card yet. Just having everything else cycling out. That Ice Wizard getting, uh, getting rid of that Barbarian. E-Dragon still alive. But yeah. goes down. Could be Double Prince Graveyard here for sure. That's definitely a possibility with the cards that we've seen from FMGG. And I think both players playing very cautious here. Of course, this is the most important game. There's a Lightning here. Make sure that Cannon Cart doesn't get anywhere near the bridge and is stuck in defense mode only. Yeah, yeah he used that Lightning because it seemed like UCJ has a Golem. And he's not going to play that before a minute mark or like a minute or five. Yeah, there it is after that Lightning. So FMGG to go straight in with that RG. A rush onto the left. All right, which one will work here? And a Lumberjack is a great counter, but the bar barrel coming in here will help deal with that Lumberjack. Another counter bar barrel eliminates that Ice Spirit, but the Mega Minion is onto it. Quite a bit of damage done from that Royal Giant push. All right, five shots onto that Princess Tower, but the goal limits 100% HP before he crosses the bridge. Here comes the Cannon Cart along with it. You gotta stop that cart and the goal limit together. FMGG's gotta have a defense. Mega Minions countering each other here, having to use the Tornado to back all this up, trying to get everything into the Ice Wizard spray. Oh, but this he's is going heavy. down. This is heavy Lumberjacks on the tower. It's going down. So much damage on it. That's a tower down. Just it takes the first ground. And this is a huge push. That Golem is pretty weak, though. It does get split up in the Golemites, but you have a perfectly healthy Another Lumberjack. Cannon cart. Two Cannon Carts trying to go for the Royal Giant to clap us. It's not gonna be enough. That's three crowns and Juicy J is your champion from WCG 2019. Wow, what a final game going straight in that golem. That's a, that's a heck of a golem play. You got that strength, you risk it, but you take it all. That's Juicy J. Having moment there for Juicy J. He saved that just for that situation. He knew full well that against that Royal Giant, he could throw the Lumberjack down. Yes, the Royal Giant will get quite a few shots, but he's then allowed to build up his own push with that Golem and do what Golem decks do best. Get a ton of units behind the Golem and just push in for the three crown. Exactly. Lumberjack can take care of so many things. Even the RG is going to connect few shots. It's not as strong as the Golem pushing it with the Baby Dragon. Everything behind it, it was way too strong. And the decision to go for that three crown instead of just having a longer game, that was the winning key point. Having that kind of decision making on the fly, I mean, this is your champion. Yeah, what a series between these two players, both playing out of their minds, taking it to the fifth game for the match. No rematches though, it was just a clean, clean victory here for each player each time they played. And what I found really interesting about this was the pace of play. Yes. Both players were just ready to go. They just kind of were in a zone, they want to just do it, fight for it, and then in the end, Juicy J comes through. I know, fire, fire versus fire. Ice versus ice, you gotta respond to it and you gotta be quick, you gotta just go through it. Oh, look how happy they are trying to have that trophy. Yes, you get excited, it doesn't really open well. <laughs> <laughs> grab the bottom of it, somebody grab the yeah, bottom the, and pull. There no, you go. There's no synergy between the two. There we go. <laughs> oh, even his mom helping out on the stage, he's gonna open it, there we go. Yes. How cool is this? Look at this, some victory rewards here for Juicy J. Let's see exactly Whoa. what he's got. I see a hog rider. Is that a see, hog? That, see that mohawk there? So we get a hog rider. Looks like we've got the hammer for him as well. Looks like it's the figurine here for the hog oh, rider. Oh, that's so cool. I mean, that's one of the things that I personally wanted. So many fans would love to have that too. That's like an extra prize on top of that 50 grand. Yeah, exactly. It's really nice. They're really cool trophies you can get 
you can see here, they're going to put the Hog Rider together, hold him up for victory. Now, he didn't need the Hog Rider to win. Now, we did see the Hog Rider one time from FNGG with uh -huh. that Mortar deck, of course, but what a series here between these two players. And I, I found it really fascinating that both uh, players really started to utilize Fireball. We saw it from both of them because we saw mm -hmm. so many Barbarians and various other uni units that the Fireball is effective against, and we haven't really seen many Inferno Towers. Uh, some of the minor balloon deck earlier in the knockout stages. So other than that, we haven't seen much Inferno Tower in this tournament, and both players making the adjustment. Now, we did see some lightning, but we saw a lot more fireball. Yes, especially in the final se uh, semifinals, we saw a lot of lightning going against the cage and the brawler because it, lightning takes care of the cage and the brawler together and the unit, making sure that RG shoots straight into the tower. Those are some cool strategies, but... Usually, usually what RG ended up happening was actually losing. There's that moment. Finished Hog Rider. What a great figure to have in the Grand Final. That's another great prize to just have it in your house and you'll be looking at it until you die, basically. Oh, yeah. You putting that one in a glass case for the rest of your life. That one's going to be on show. <laughs> Winning it here on a huge, huge stage at mm -hmm. the WCG Xi'an 2019 Finals. Congratulations, Juicy J, on your first place finish. And also congratulations to FMGG playing extremely well throughout this tournament. Oh, yes, getting that second place. FMGG seemed to be unstoppable through the group stage, and everyone was saying, I think FMGG is going to take that first place or even the second place. That's, like, basically guaranteed, and he takes second place. Really close final going all the way to game number five. Also third place going to Tauki, so that's another 10,000 uh, grand prize for Tauki. That was some great third place match going on between Franco and Tauki. That was another great matchup. Look how skilled they are. We don't really have a 3-0 sweep anymore because they're so good. They counter decks. Think about the decks. They understand so much. After the matches, they go back to their hotel and study their opponents so much. We can literally tell by, their, uh, by changing the spell because the day before, they would have a lightning and a zap. And then depending on your opponent, they would change it into the fireball. Just understanding your opponent that they're likely to bring something like uh, barbarians or not. Just having those kind of studies, it really showed in the game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, both players were clearly very well prepared for each other going into this fifth game. So they really studied each other very well. And in the end, it was this Golem Cannon Cart deck once again for Juicy J that proves to be very, very powerful. It's, the Cannon Cart is so useful at dealing with a lot of units that are kind of popular in the meta, especially mm -hmm. like the Dark Prince, uh, any kind of wizard. It's extremely powerful against. Yes. Uh, e even the Goblin Brawler is very close, uh, strong against. Yes, and exactly. That's really, really strong. And it seems like that is it for the Grand Finals for Clash Royale here at WCG 2019. Live from Xi'an, China. We will be, of course, that's it. And we have Juicy J as your champion. Keep tuning in to World Cyber Games 2019 for more esports. It's going to keep on happening. And keep on loving Clash Royale. We love it. You guys love it. Everyone's going to love it forever. Keep, it, keep tuning in to Clash Royale Esports. Clash Royale League does happen all year. It's going to continue. Keep supporting.